Good morning, Ambrose community. My name is Connor Beduza. I've spent many years at camp, so it's no surprise that an old camp song has been stuck in my heart. So as we worship this morning, wherever you may be, as we worship virtually, let us be reminded that our Redeemer lives. Would you worship with me? I know he rescued my soul His blood has covered my sin I believe Oh, I believe My shame is taken away yeah. My pain is healed in his name I believe Oh, I believe Conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I know He rescued. Rescued my soul, his blood has covered my sin. I believe, oh, I believe my shame is taken away, my pain is used in his name. Oh, I believe, oh, I believe. I'll raise a banner Cause my Lord has conquered the grave My Redeemer lives Sing it out My Redeemer lives Oh my Redeemer Mountain top to see your kingdom come. One, two, three, my redeemer is 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 my redeemer. Our Redeemer does indeed live. Good morning. Welcome to chapel on Wednesday, May the 13th, 2020. I'd like to thank Connor Beduza for leading us in our opening song. Connor is part of the graduating class of 2020 at Ambrose University. This past year, it was really a pleasure to work with him in his role as our chapel worship coordinator at Ambrose. Hear the word of the Lord from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, starting at verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. 
This is the word of the Lord. It's said that our experience of the COVID-19 pandemic is giving us a deeper sense of our shared humanity, the things we have in common with each other. Now, I live across the street from an NHL hockey player, and in many ways, he is very different from me. Well, you know, we're, we both play hockey, and uh, that's, that's a thing. But for some reason, all I can think of is that he makes approximately $6.9 million and change for shooting pucks into a net down at the saddle dome. But it occurs to me as I watch him sitting on his front steps in his flip-flops and shorts, texting on his phone, playing with his kids, that just like me, he now has to practice his wrist shot in the garage, shooting against a piece of plywood just like me. But seriously, we have something else we share in common, he and I. The COVID-19 virus is less likely to kill either of us because of our privilege. Death on the kind of global scale we've seen it has revealed some sobering truths. The coronavirus is not an equal opportunity killer. Physical distancing is possible for some, but not all. Staying home is a privilege not everyone can afford. Seniors, the homeless, the poor, the racialized are much more vulnerable than I am. Death opens our eyes to things like this, things that may have been hidden from us before. We live in a culture that generally avoids talk about death and dying. That's understandable. But thinking about our deaths can help us see what really matters in our living. And our gospel reading today is an invitation to reflect on dying in the light of God's love. That's what Jesus is up to here. In your living, says Jesus, love one another like I've loved you. But loving may involve dying. There's no greater love than laying down your life for the other. This is the week of the Ambrose commencement ceremonies. And for any of you grads who are listening today, I want you to consider this. Jesus is giving a farewell address to his disciples. His own death is imminent. By the way, that's not the part that's relevant for you, our grads. (laughs) Rather, Jesus is giving a bit of a graduation speech to his disciples. They're finishing up their three-year apprenticeships with him. No doubt they are anxious uh, about what's coming next, and rightly so. The road ahead is unclear. But Jesus offers them words for a life well-lived going forward, for a life of flourishing and purpose. He says, Here's how to prepare for wise, joyful, redemptive engagement in the world. No, no, wait, that's the Ambrose mission statement. Actually, that's not far off what Jesus is getting at. He essentially says to his own grads, my friends, you've been made for a purpose. You've been made to love, to love well, to love me, to love the Father, and to love one another. But this love is costly. It's love in the shape of a cross. It requires dying. And that's the only kind of love that can transform, save, and redeem a broken life or a broken creation. This isn't your garden variety spiritual teaching that Jesus is giving. It is contrarian wisdom. Jesus' own disciples aren't sure they understand it. It seems very counterintuitive, and it is. Yet Jesus tells them, and says it often, if you want to find your life, you must lose it. What looks like death is really a becoming. What looks like loss is really gain. This is what Christian spirituality calls the Easter or Paschal mystery. Paschal from the Greek word Pascha for Passover. Jesus became the living image of that pattern. 
his crucified body was transformed into the risen Christ. Wisdom teachers of all kinds say that if you spend your whole life avoiding dying, you'll lose your real life. And Jesus adds this remarkable promise from the shadow of the cross. Embrace this costly love and you'll come to know my joy, real joy, the fullest joy you could ever know. Before the coronavirus cut short, the on-campus part of our winter term at Ambrose, a group of students and staff and faculty were meeting and reading and discussing the novel, The Brothers Karamazov, the final novel of the 19th century Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky. At the very beginning of that long novel is an epigraph. An epigraph is a phrase or a quotation you place at the beginning of a book or a, or a chapter to indicate the leading idea or theme. And Dostoevsky's epigraph, the one he chose for his novel, is a verse from John's Gospel, chapter 12. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That is the Easter mystery. That's the Paschal mystery that is at the very heart of what it means to be a Christian. And this is Jesus' message of hope for all of his grads, all of his followers this year and every year. And may it be the epigraph that serves as the leading idea or theme for our spiritual journeys. Amen. Let's pray and entrust those who are graduating this Friday to God. And let's pray for each other, for courage and faith, as we embrace Jesus' way of costly love. May God, who began this good work in our grads, carry it through to completion, enabling you to, to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless all of us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we will live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, unacknowledged privilege, and exploitation of people so that we will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and homelessness, so that we will reach out our hands to comfort them and change their pain into joy. May God bless us with the fullness of Christ's joy, so that when we experience hate, rejection, insult, and condemnation, our joy may be our act of resistance against the world's despair. And may God bless us with the foolishness to think that we can make a difference in the world so that we will do the things which others tell us cannot be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.